What's going on, y'all? So listen. What is going on, you guys? Okay. So we are back. We are back for my stories, okay? Listen, I love OWN um, because OWN um, give us stories to replace our stories until our other stories come back. <laughs> Bitch, it's like looking at General Hospital, Young and the Restless, and all that other stuff. Passions. This should be called Passions Part 2, girl, because this is a mess. This show is a mess. And then I got the nerve to say it's one episode before the mid-season finale. A mid-season finale? How long this is? Girl, I ain't complaining. I'm here for it, okay? I am here for all of this mess, all right? Listen, I really needed this um, to pick me up because today I was so stressed out at work. God damn. We, I, I, they worked me. They literally got all eight hours out of me, okay? All eight hours out of me. But anyway... Let's get into this episode of Ambitions, okay? This is season one, episode nine, Giving Up, girl. All right, listen, Rondell, baby. <laughs> Rondell going through her whole spiel, you know. She just feeling the type of way because they're about to audit Thelma's place. And, you know, they're trying to say that her, um, most of 60% of her, uh, you know, petitioners that signed her petition, they're not from the um, neighborhood. So, therefore, they're invalid. And, you know, she's trying to figure out who did it. She talking to Senior. She talking to Kent. And at this point, Kent talking about something, it was Evan. Okay? Stephanie, like, it had to be Greg. It had to be Greg or it had to be Stephanie. Okay? Rondell, this is what I should say. Rondell saying all this stuff. And then, um, you know, Kent was like, it got to be Evan. And everything. You know, of course, Senior, he's sitting there. You ain't going to talk about my son like this, okay? Not in my face, all right? I know y'all got y'all issues or whatever, but show me some respect because that's my son. That's my seed. Came out of my sack, okay? That's what you're going to do. You know, he was like, yo, bro. Sorry, I'm so sorry about that. You know, just the spur of the moment and everything. And I was like, I know you got your issues with Evan, but he didn't do this. Brondell is right. It was Stephanie, okay? It was Stephanie. It was one to two. It was Stephanie, all right? And I really, really felt bad for her. Like, God, when you work so hard for something and you think you got it right there in your grasp, and then it just escapes you. It just escapes you. That is the worst feeling ever, you know? Then we get to this party that's being hosted at um the Pure Voice, uh, you know, um, place of business, and, um, it's for one of Lori's friends, okay, a little shindig that's happening, and she's talking to old girl, getting her a drink, whatever, and, you know, they just chatting it up, and she cut her off, cause she see this black chocolate sister come through, right, honey dip came through, and I was like, ooh, <laughs> So you the girl that was in the preview because I was trying to look and see. I said, baby, that is not Carly, okay? I, Carly, was not in that preview with you in that bed, okay? I said, oh, so you, 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 you like them, you like them chocolatey. Okay, I like that. You like them chocolatey mixed in with a vanilla swirl because that's exactly what happened, all right? So, um. she looking at old girl. She go over there to her and she was like, what's up? She was like, you? You know, you like me, I like you, and we both do. We both? What you talking about? She looked over to some white dude that was over there. I said, uh-oh, what y'all finna do? Bitch, a threesome? A threesome? And I was like, you know what, Lori, you ain't shit. <laughs> Lori, you not shit at all, okay? But at the end of the day, I understand it. She was cute. I, I I get it. I get it. You know, you know, you didn't necessarily say that we are exclusive. You didn't necessarily say we're boyfriend. Well, we're girlfriend and girlfriend or whatever. You didn't say that. So, you know, all things goes at this point. We can leave it up to interpretation. Then we got Evan and, um, you know, Evan and, um, Stephanie. They baffle me so much. They sit there talking about this Rondell situation. And basically, you know, Stephanie trying to clear her name as if she didn't have nothing to do with it. She would never want to get her audited and all this stuff or whatever. And, you know, um, uh, Evan trying to, you know, fix the whole thing and wanting them to sit down and all this stuff. I don't really care about what the conversation was because what baffled me, I was distracted by the fact that at one point, at one point, Stephanie put some cream or something on her fingers, right? And then Evan licked it off. I, what? <laughs> 
what you know we probably gonna get a sex scene with them sometime soon you know this is what they 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 they, they reaching up to you know they build it up to because baby i'm like when we first seen y'all she putting a gun to your head and now y'all kissing and showing affections and licking fingers you know i was here for i was here for y'all marriage so that's what y'all supposed to do and the thing is they have a like hate uh, relationship and they're partners okay so this is a a, a relationship that was based on being for you know business opportunities you can tell you know and then at the end of the day you know uh they do have some type of feelings for each other they probably love each other in the sense that you know i love you for having my kids and you know i love you for you know doing this business with me but i'm not in love with you i like you okay i'm in like with you not even in like they like each other sometimes okay and, you know, they just talking about some, um, you know, what they can do with them as place and how, you know, they can get Rondell to, um, you know, come over to this whole establishment that's happening. And right when they was kissing and about to get in or whatever, you know, um, Stephanie get this uh, text, um, you know, alert showing that, you know, uh, Titus then got arrested and they had his mug shot and everything. And I'm just like, what the heck? Titus said, Pure Foy talking to Lori. Lori, like, oh, so what happened? You know, you was um big in bed or whatever, you beating up a DA or whatever. That's what your wife work at, uh, and all this stuff. I said, Lori, put two and two together, okay? Put two and two together. That's what you need to do, okay? And she talking and of course antagonizing him. Oh, you coming at me with this big bad voice or whatever. Were well, you like this, this angry when you was talking to Damien when you did that to old boy and all this stuff? Huh, interesting. Now, you know I didn't do nothing. And when the media comes through, I need you to tell them that I'm innocent and all this stuff. Now, why would I do something like that for you? I don't even like you. I ain't even want my daddy to hire you, boo. Okay, so they were just going back and forth. I said, you know what? We just need to put our feelings to the side, and we just need to use common sense and know that he would never do something like that. And, you know, just put your feelings to the side, Lori, and we need to do what looks good, make the company look good, okay? So we need to, you know... um what is this called? We need a fixer to come in and fix this, okay? We need Olivia. Olivia needs to come out of retirement. She ain't been doing shit ever since she's been gone. So, you know, it is what it is, okay? Them two just gonna continue to go back and forth with each other. Bella come down there to Thelma's place to see her mama and all that stuff to, you know, get Joaquin. Mind you, Senior over there holding on to Joaquin. I said, do Senior know that that's his great baby? Okay, at this point, I'm thinking nobody else know in the world that um Joaquin is uh Evan's son. But later on in the episode, we see our nest. Bella mama go over there to the house and let Evan up in there. Evan playing with Joaquin and we hear the conversation. So, she knows that Evan is the baby daddy. He was like, you know, he said, I'm so thankful that you let me, um, you know, come in and see my son and all this stuff and uh, to see Joaquin. He did say son, but he said Joaquin. But then when uh, Inez was like, you know, I know how it is when um, Bella grew up without a father. I would never want that to happen to another child. So I'll let you with his life and all that stuff. I was like, oh, so you know. Inez know. And Inez ain't told a soul. Inez loyal to her daughter. And her daughter should think that she ain't got nothing to worry about because um Inez could have tricked out to Rondell in the heat of the moment. She could have went over there and tricked out to Stephanie. Okay, even though she don't fuck with that bitch like that, she could have. You know, she could have tricked out to Senior and said something. Could have slipped up any time, but she hasn't. Okay, I said, that's a lawyer bitch right there. Respect your mama. After she then came in and saw that Evan was there, and, you know, she got her little problems and custody issue going on with Evan. So she pissed off and, you know, she told her, uh, Inez to get up out of there. I'm like, uh-uh, don't do that to Inez. Then we got this shit with Damien. Let me tell you something. I'm just going to go here, okay? Damien is crazy. We have already established that. And he's going over there, talking to Amara, talking about, you know, because Mara, like, you know, my husband didn't do this to you and all this stuff and you did this to yourself or you had somebody else do it and you need to drop the charges and you know this and all this stuff. And it was like, your husband is the one that attacked me and then gave this girl an ultimatum. You need to choose me or your husband. She said, nigga, I'm gonna always choose my husband over you. You over here confess 
expressing your love and how you missed me and the only reason why you was down there in Birmingham and why you here is because of me, that ain't my problem. I'm here with that man that you accused of doing something that I know for sure that he didn't do. Okay, I'm sitting here like you are... You really thought that she was going to? And then later on in the episode, going to tell her some, um, I can still taste you on my lips, okay? I'm going to go down to Birmingham, all right? That's what I'm going to do, all right? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. But I'm not going to do it without, leave, without you. I said, what? Damien, you are twisted. Mind you, Stephanie had to confront his ass and tell him, listen, okay? Now, I done told you to do some stuff, but I ain't tell you to go this far. I ain't want you to get the man locked up and get him charges and sully his name or whatever. That's not what I'm trying to do, okay? He looking at her like, hold up, hold up. So, you doing all this stuff not just because you want me to break this marriage up. It's because you got feelings. You in love with this lame-ass nigga. And then, you know, he pulled her cards and then um, Damien, um, 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 he pulled her car. Stephanie was like, but let me pull yours too. Okay. You all up in this. And let me tell you something. You can never even wash the drawers that he, uh, be wearing. I said, oh, oh, okay. You know, they just pulling each other cars and everything. And, you know, she calling him out about how he be feeling about Amara and, and, and the steps that he going too far and all this stuff. And at this point he was like, what you think going to stop me? Why you think, um, I, I just might not just go ahead and snap your neck right quick. And it was like, oh, you ain't finna do nothing. And at one point, they were so close to each other. I'm thinking that that, I said, I know y'all not about to fuck. Y'all not about to have sex. Not now. I said, you are not, Stephanie, you're not about to take another one down. Okay? Close that vagina up. Okay? Still, set. Okay? Just like you did Evan. You know what I'm saying? But, um, no. Had her on a thing like she was about to choke her out and she pulled that Glock out. I said, uh-uh. Come on, Monica. She turned into Monica real quick. She was like, uh-uh, not come ready, okay? You stay ready. You don't have to get ready. What you gonna do? Now, when I get through, you gonna go and you gonna do everything according to what I say, not what you say. You need to stay on script. This ain't no improv class. I said, uh-uh. <laughs> You better tell him. And walked out the the way she walked out the door like, yeah, motherfucker, I got that ass. I'm that bitch. Okay, first of all, we should have known the scene was going to be dramatic as hell. By the way, she came to the door with her little fur on and, and the sunglasses. I said, girl, which weather is it? Is it sunny? Is it cold? Is it is it warm? What is it? Okay, you little throw on. Okay, but I'm just sitting here like, Damien is a mess. Then we get this dude, Brody. From IT, coming over there to uh, Amara's place, Amara's office. Um, he wanted to, you know, update the software that's on the computer, uh, her laptop or whatever. And he's doing this for everybody. And she was like, I can do it. He said, oh, you like one of the only other two that's like tech savvy. So, you know, um, he mentions also that, you know, she's been on her laptop all the time. All hours of the night and everything. So at this moment, <laughs> she goes and she looks at her login and everything and she's looking at the activity and stuff. And so she sees that Titus was on her stuff. She put two and two together. And, you know, of course she goes home. She cussed Titus out. Titus like, we ain't had no problem until Damien was here. I'm just trying to keep tabs on him. I said, baby, you showing your insecurity. And I understand that you know that deep down you can call it insecurity. But deep down, Titus know that Damien is up to no good. Like he said, you know, um... I keep on saying I'm going to get this light and never got the light yet. But I brought me something that's going to switch up the game a little bit. Just wait. Um, But, yeah. <laughs> it was like, you know, you had her once or whatever a couple of times. I'm going to have her forever. That's what he said when they was in that parking lot in last week's episode and all that stuff. You know, so Titus in his feelings. But he just know the dude ain't shit. Okay. And he also a little bit threatened because it's a possibility that Amara really do got some feelings for Damien. You just never know with this. Because Amara can be playing games too. Amara can sit there and, and, and be like, you know what? F you. I don't want nothing to do with you. You need to go to hell and all that stuff. And in the back of her mind, she like, mm. And when he said he was putting that pipe down, he was putting that pipe down, girl. He hit my soul. Okay? She could be thinking that and be like, damn, 
what would it take if I just, you know, all I have to do is just go get a little taste and nothing else. I said, no, girl, don't think about that. Exit that out your mind, okay? Which you know is in the back. It's all the way back here, and it's coming up front. It's coming up front. Before this season over, I guarantee you not. I'm pretty sure Damien and Amara are going to have sex. They're going to still fuck around with each other. But, um... Anyway, we got Senior wanted to propose to Lou Ann. What's her name? Lou Lean. Lou Lean. Lou Lean and her goddamn church hats, okay? She got a hat for every outfit. Girl, come on, Deaconess. Come on, Deaconess. Rondell getting in her feelings about the whole thing. She just feel like her daddy trying to replace her mama. And it was like, listen, it took 30 years for me to go ahead and have another woman in my life and get to this point. So, you know, let me do what I got to do. And, you know, Evan did come over there trying to talk to Rondell, wanted her to have the uh, meet up with Stephanie. Um, and she didn't want to do that at first, but they eventually do go ahead and have a meet up with Stephanie, uh, Rondell and Senior. And basically trying to convince her the goodness of what's going to happen. You can have Rondell's uh, Thelma's place and you can still be a part of this uh, construction establishment. What is it called? Angel Rose or Eagle Rose or whatever that they're trying to um, build up. Okay. You can have the name. You, it can stay in the family. Everybody's going to be well compensated. And if you keep it on the block or whatever, you can get this 99 year lease and you know, it's going to be more businesses around more apartments around, which means you're going to have more money because more people is going to be around and we just make them a place to cornerstone. Okay, baby. Stephanie sold them a dream. Okay. A pipe dream at that because as soon as they left. When she told her assistant, draw up that contract. And when you do, take out that part about the 99-year lease. And then also take out that part about, you know, everybody getting compensated. You know, Rondell, she a hood rat. She don't know how to read contracts. I said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You are so rude, Stephanie. So rude. Okay? And then we get to this part. The one part that truly gagged me in this episode. That truly gagged me in this episode. Damien is sitting in a chair or he's sitting somewhere and I'm looking like, oh my God, he already didn't got beat up, you know, that he paid for. I'm like, damn, did Stephanie take him and, um, you know, put him in a, uh, 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 someplace where she can keep his, keep her out on him and only let him out the box when she want to, because it just looked real suspicious. Like what's going on? What's happening? I don't know. Okay. Baby, he looked like he was in some type of anguish. Oh, no, that wasn't anguish, baby. That was pleasure. That was all types of pleasure. And I said, what is going on? What is going on? Baby, Brody lifts his head up from between his legs. And I said, you have got to be kidding, bitch. I wasn't ready. You got to be kidding. What the fuck? When? When? And then Brody had the nerve to say, oh, and Amara gave all this up. I said, what? <laughs> Wait, you got a mouthful of there, don't you, Brody? Shut up and get back down there doing your job. That's basically what Damon said. Okay, he pushed his head down. He tried to kiss him. He said, no kissing. I said, oh, so me and Brody went like, oh, so you one of them. Hmm, okay. If you kiss him, you gay. You gay gay. <laughs> that's what it is not that it's okay that he suck your dick because you know it's just a it's a hole it's a it's a warm hole you know but if he kiss you you gay gay okay that girl come on damien come on damien it's okay come on out that closet. that you bisexual it's all right you like to get your uh king sauce you know pansexual all of it it is what it is okay it's 2019 you ain't gotta have that stuff you know um speaking of having stuff Stephanie had fake like Carly had texted Lori and to get Carly over there, uh, Lori over there to the house. Okay, just to tell Car uh, Lori you're going to break up with Carly and that whole threesome shit, bitch, I set that shit up. I said, wait a minute. That was another gag moment too, but you know, not as much as the, um, you know, Brody and Damien, but I was just like, this bitch just set this up. Why did not see that coming? Okay. She was like, and they filmed it. So what you going to do is you going to go over here and you going to break up with Cardi. She, she young, she naive or whatever. This her first one, you know, she too young to know what love is and all that stuff. So it is, she'll be okay. You know, at first, you know, Lori was being Lori, you know, all about uh, coming ex uh, uh giving Stephanie fighting, fighting with fire, whatever with her. But then she was like, okay, you know, you say you feel that you're going to fuck my shit up. All right. So I'm do what you say. You know, so she go over there, um, meet Carly at her uh, school and, you know, try to break up with her. But 
<clears throat> she told her the reason why. She came clean with it. She was like, your mama did this shit, okay? Your mama set me up with some prostitutes. I said, it's one thing to cheat. And then you gonna cheat with prostitutes? Girl, go get yourself tested. I ain't trying to say that the prostitutes and stuff got something. But I'm just saying you don't know what these random people got, okay? Go get your... I would have said that regardless. You These random folks. You said randos. Go get yourself tested, Lori. And um, Carly, you go get yourself tested too, okay? Because you just don't know. Lori love her. But see, something about Lori, I get her up here because I take her down too. You know, and that ain't even my type. You know what I'm saying? I take her down too. Give her a taste of her own medicine. But anyway, moving on from that, you know, Carly and her feelings. And she was like, go talk to your mama. Your mama the one that said it. I, if you don't believe me, I'm sitting here like, you know, Stephanie can lie. Okay, she can lie. This thing came over that Abella apartment and all that stuff, and that confused me. I was like, it just, like, do he know that what and, and was playing hide and seek with Joaquin? And I'm sitting here like, does he know that Joaquin is his um grandson, or do he have an inkling? Like, I was just really confused by that whole scene, though. Um, but anyway. So, they're getting ready to have this anniversary dinner to Thelma's about Thelma, you know. And, um, everybody shows up, the family, Inez, and all that. And, um, you know, Stephanie shows up with Evan. They all, <laughs> we're good to see you. Oh, my yeah, God, we're having so much fun and all that. And, you know, at this point, everything was cool. And then one of Stephanie guys come in with some papers, and Evan was like, "I know you don't have that guy doggone um uh 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 contract. I told you we not finna do this stuff right now. Not doing this dinner, not on this anniversary dinner. No, we not doing it." She was like, "We gotta get these contracts signed, okay? So we're gonna do it, and I'm gonna do it in a way that it's not gonna be brought up in front of everybody. I'm just gonna slide it in there, and then you know um." We see Senior trying to sit there and talk to Lou, uh, Lou, Lou, okay, Lou Lynn, and um, she was just about to get ready to propose, telling her because she was like, you know, I don't want to have to compete with another woman that's not a dead woman that's not even here, and he was like, no, that ain't even it, that ain't even it, and right then, um, we hear Ron Dale saying, I told you I'm not about to sign no contracts right now, or whatever, and so everybody looking over there at her like, what's going on? Stephanie blew the cap off everything, and, um, you know, Rondell, Stephanie just messed up everything in the whole thing, okay? That's basically what it all came down to. Um, the cover's blown, okay? So, everybody knows about the contract. They know that Rondell was supposed to be signing this contract, and, you know, Lou, Lulin is upset, and Inez, like, you know, you was offered a whole bunch of money from Greg, but now all of a sudden you offer money from them. What's changed, okay? You supposed to be out here fighting for the banks, and now you finna sell your soul to the devil, just to another devil? Just for what? Like, you was telling us, it, it, it seems very hypocritical. Lulin, she gets in her feelings, and she upset about it, so she leaves. I said, oh, no. So, huh, and sing your damn near done, Okay. Kent and his feelings, she, he, he, he like this, you, you fake, you fake, I can't believe you would do some stuff like this, okay, and so at this point, he done for right now, so she done lost her man for the moment, Senior done lost his woman for the moment, she probably lost her friend for the moment, okay, Carly pissed off at her mama, and she was like, you, you know, Lori was right, you did do it, you ain't shit, bitch, and she looking like, Carly, Carly, and Evan, like, what's going on? It was like, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. I'm finna get Rondell to sign these papers. Rondell going to bed, and she's still, like, trying to get her to sign these papers. And I'm like, Stephanie, let it go. Y'all did all this stuff, and Thelma sitting there on that picture looking at y'all like, mm, mm, mm. Girl, it was a mess. Stephanie just messed up everybody's shit that night, okay? On the anniversary of Thelma's place. Man, don't you know how to ruin the party, Stephanie? Jesus, you should be tired of being alone by yourself, okay? Next week, we gonna, I think we're going to find out next week who poisons her, okay? And my boo coming back. Hey, Marilyn, okay? And, um, girl, let me find out you poison that girl. I understand. I understand. But anyway, y'all tell Damien, come on out that closet, boo. Come on out that closet, boo, okay? Um, <laughs> y'all tell me how y'all feel about it, and I will see y'all later. Peace.